Wonder if I'll discover any rare swords. I came up from Ah, you're back. From the sound of your stride, I sense you're in good spirits. Many who undertake the far-reaching journey to the Xianzhou are weighed down by a heavy heart and exhaustion. But your steps are bold and steady. A stride worthy of a nameless. Let's get down to business. I analyzed the prescription you procured, the draft of Draconic Surge. Now that I have a preliminary conclusion, it needs to be delivered to the seat of Divine Foresight. The conclusion... Put simply, I... I don't believe that the draft of Draconic Surge holds the cure to the Mara. Even in the foreseeable future, there will likely not be any such cure. I've compiled the details into a written analysis. If you're interested, feel free to take a look. This is a copy of pharmacological studies on the draft of Draconic Surge. If the Chief Counselor wants to see it urgently, I'll have to ask you to deliver it for me. Came up from Starskiff Haven just to see. Ah, grass. You look. You're back. Anything you wanted to share? Wow. Even for those alchemists, that was fast. Don Shu? W wait. Why would the Alchemy Commission's Chief Alchemist be away from her post? I've heard that the Chief Alchemist is visually impaired. She rarely leaves the Alchemy Commission delve. She has a vast knowledge and expertise. No wonder she was able to analyze the pharmacology so quickly. Let me see her report. No cure? Where did these villains get their hands on such a complex prescription? This is infuriating. Still, this is a clue we can follow. Thank you. 
Please accept these gifts for your efforts. Please, take them. You've done so much for the Lafu, for the Sienjo. This is the least I could do. Thank you for coming on such short notice. My stay in Exalting Sanctum was supposed to be focused on treating people and delivering medicine. But the Seat of Divine Foresight tasked me with analyzing the prescription. I've been severely delayed. I've already concocted some of the medicine in question. But there can't be any further delays. Could you assist me in ensuring it arrives on time? Thank you. The patient in question is a little girl. If she's gotten into any trouble, be sure to let me know when you get back. This is the medicine. Her house is near the Court of Tranquility. It shouldn't be hard to find her. One Don shoes. Aw, little Miss Lady can't see ahead, can't see right, can't see left. Heads to the east, ends up west. <laughs> She's stuck. <laughs> she can't get down. Hey, what you looking at, Outworlder? Mind your own business. What's this got to do with you? You were family or something? Cause you don't look like it. Hmm. You're just trying to be a hero. You sure you want to mess with the Lafu trio? <laughs> what a doofus! Who hasn't heard of the Lafu trio? The Lafu trio is made up of two, uh, th three super awesome kids that everyone's afraid of. Even the Realm Keeping Commission! Eh, go ahead. You think we're scared of you? They'll just put us in detention. We'll be free again in no time. Uh, let's leave it, boss. Detention's detention, but if your dad finds out, you'll get yelled at and start crying again. Hey! Why'd you bring that up? <laughs> You're right. We shouldn't stoop to this short lifer's level. Did you hear that? The boss is letting you off the hook. So scram! Yeah, the boss doesn't want to stoop to your level. Now buzz off before he yells at you and makes you cry. You idiot! Enough about yelling and crying! Thank 
you for helping me, mister. I'm okay. It's my fault. I shouldn't have wandered off on my own. Then I wouldn't have run into those guys. They always laugh at me for being blind. And they like to trip me up and steal my things. <laughs> Thank goodness you were here. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let me off so easily. Oh, Don Shu asked you to come? Things are bad on Olafu recently. Don Shu must be very busy. Thank you, mister. Remember to thank her for me. Why does she wander about alone? Well, I've delivered the medicine. I should report back to Don Shu. Did you deliver the medicine? <sighs> she reminds me of myself when I was a child. I also had to find my way in the dark, face obstacles I couldn't predict, as well as deal with unconscious prejudices people had against me. If I was ever injured by bullies or after a fall, I'd run crying to the healers at the Alchemy Commission, and ask them to heal me. I suppose that's why I followed in their footsteps, to pay a little kindness forward. Thank you for looking after the child. Could I ask you for another favor, friend? I want to meet the little girl. Can you lead me to her? I worry about her wandering around on her own. And I want to know what's been on her mind lately. Her parents passed away in the denizens of Abundance Wars. The relatives who took her in aren't close to her. And whenever I treat her, she often confides in me. A healer's medicine might remedy one's physical health. But sometimes, the loneliness and hurt inside one's heart needs companionship and care to heal. She told me that whenever she's feeling troubled, she finds a quiet corner in the Artisanship Commission and just sits there, letting the sounds wash over her. Her parents used to be artisans in the Commission, so I think she has some nostalgic connection to the place. In all likelihood, that's where she'll be. <sighs> There's danger around every corner these days. Especially for a sightless child. Let's go.
What's happening? Is the girl in trouble? <laughs> Strike the park! Nap time. Stay back, Clara. Stay back, Clara. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Annihilate. You won't get away. It's all right. Everything's okay now, Xiao Yu. scared anymore. He is here. But I... When I think about all the trouble I've caused you two, I feel like such a burden. I'm sorry. Is that why you're crying? Maybe you should start getting used to this feeling. Because... In the next few centuries, visually impaired people like us will continue to require help from everyone we meet. So, if a little bit of guilt like this is enough to break your heart, then how will you manage such an arduous path? I'm not trying to console her. This is the reality. Walking alone in the darkness, fearing every incoming, invisible obstacle, unable to understand other people's descriptions. Everyone, everything, is like a hot coal in the dark. Invisible, yet still able to burn you. As a long-life species, she can expect life to continue like this for nearly a thousand years. She must learn to depend upon herself rather than just foolishly waiting around for the next hero to swoop in and save her. One hopes that would be the case. But that would require someone to be by her side every waking second of every day. In the meantime, she'll have to learn to withstand the darkness. Just as I have. Hey, you're right, Tanshu. From now on, I'll do my best to rely on myself. Good. I hope you remember this. Forever. This place is too dangerous. Let's head back to Exalting Sanctum. Thank you again. For all you've done. It would seem we incomplete ones are often bullied from a tender age. I endured in numerous hardships to become Chief Alchemist. Yet, there are still things that leave me feeling helpless. That's the reason I said what I said. You might mistake my words for being hurtful. But the truth is, no amount of words can prepare her for what lies ahead. For long life species, these things are permanent. Whether we are beautiful or ugly, tall or short, wise or foolish, all of it is encoded into our flesh from the moment we are born. The impairments of short life species can be corrected with ingenia or surgery. But that's an impossibility for Sienjo natives. No matter the method employed, how our bodies will eventually return to their original states. I too was once a non-believer. 
I fooled myself into acquiring artificial eye implants. Soon thereafter, my sightless eyes began to regenerate, and I was left in pain and despair. That brief window of sight that I regained has turned into a perpetual source of anguish, forever etched into my mind. For long life species, this incompleteness is a permanent, unavoidable tenance. <laughs> what a joke. Even the denizens of abundance, so-called abominations, needn't endure such torture. Perhaps we incomplete ones are merely traitors, cursed by the plague's author. Nothing. Forget I said anything. Thank you for sticking with me through all of this. I think my aspirations in Exalting Sanctum have been met. For now. Oh. I have a gift for you. Though I'll need a little time to prepare it. I'll contact you once it's ready to collect. See you soon. Mr. C.E.M. said that making bookworms feel at home is more important than getting them to buy something. All we ask is that you find a quiet spot away from the browsing areas. There you are, friend. You've been running so many errands lately. 
I'd like for you to take some useful items away with you. Examining the exhibits in the Seat of Divine Foresight inspired me to create this. I referenced some historical texts and concocted a medicine that can extend your lifespan and improve your health. I call it the Broomdew Concentrate Palette, and I'd like you to have it. Consuming it will make your body light, agile, and promote longevity and well-being. As a nameless, it'll make your journey a much less arduous one. Well then, that's that. I've still got some other business to attend to, so shall we say goodbye for now? Perhaps the next time we meet, I'll be able to see you in the true sense of the word. Hmm. Tastes a bit strange, but no adverse reactions so far. Uh, wait a minute. Ugh. My head. What's happening? Something's wrong. I'm burning up. Feels like I can't breathe. <sighs> Seems to be calming down a bit. But still uncomfortable. This doesn't seem right. I'd better talk to Ching Zhu at the Seat of Divine Foresight. Ugh. There goes my head again. Is Don Shu sure this broomdew is safe for consumption? What's happening? Isn't this the seat of divine foresight? Why are there so many Mara struck here? No, I can't let them get near me. You 
Nothing envy never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. awake. I thought we might lose you. I was so worried. You came into the seat of divine foresight and started brandishing your weapon. It looked like you'd lost control. As if you'd been stricken with Mara. There has to be something awry. Tell me what happened to you before arriving at the seat of divine foresight. From what you're saying, it seems like the gift she gave to you must be related to the Disciple's prescription we examined earlier. But the healer who examined you just now said your body doesn't seem to have been affected. <sighs> How strange. Could Don Shu be playing a trick on you? Or is her medicine somehow not working as planned? <sighs> My advice is to come back later for another examination. It's a Disciples of Sanctus Medicus prescription, after all. Who knows what healing effects it may have. I'll put out a wanted notice for Don Shu immediately. If you find any trace of her, get in touch with me. Take this Deeting with you. It might just help you find this... friend. Shu isn't here. Where could she be? I've got it. Don Shu's medicine box has her scent on it. I'll ask the D-Ting that Qingzu lent me to track her. Time to come out, little D-Thing. I need you to help me find Donshu.
Don Shu with a group of disciples? Master, stand back. Let me handle this. Stand down. He's a friend. Many of our brethren have fallen by his hands. Yes, I am aware. But... I said he's my friend. Leave us. Yes, Master. I didn't expect you to come looking for me. So they do. I am master of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, scion of Merciful Medicus, and I shall lead the entire Sienjo Alliance onto the path of abundance. Did you ingest the Broomdew Concentrate pellet I gave you? That which the elixir seekers that arrive on the Sienjo dream of. The formula to immortality. To take it is to initiate the transformation from a short life species into a Sienjo person or an abomination. Depending on your perception. Please believe me when I say that never once have I thought about harming you. I merely wanted to offer you the chance to obtain immortality and freedom. Friend, please, I urge you to leave the Lafu. Abandon this struggle. The truth isn't what it appears to be. What did the minions at the seat of Divine Foresight tell you about this conflict? That the Rainbow Arbiter is the emissary of the righteous? That the Arbiter is chasing the heathen plague's author across the stars? while the disciples of Sanctus Medicus abet their heresy. Do you really think that is the case? You don't understand Merciful Medicus, nor the devilish archer author, but you understand me. Do you see me as such? A heretic? I do not ask for you to pick a side. I just wish for you to leave the Lafu to leave this all behind. This isn't your fight, and I do not wish to make an enemy of you. Since neither of us is eager to engage in combat, let us respectfully part ways. I have been thinking. The devilish Archer Arthur is not a benevolent god, nor is Merciful Medicus a malevolent one. Your choice to align with Jing Yuan was simply due to meeting him first. Most unfortunate. Had you known me first, Perhaps we could have been good friends. Master, we should leave now. I sincerely wish that this will be our last meeting. Farewell, Nameless. <sighs> I'd better report my findings to Qing Zhu at the Seat of Divine Foresight. Wonder if I'll discover any rare swords.
How did it go? Did you manage? So you weren't able to apprehend her. I see. These people have been in hiding for so long. They must have a more nefarious plan. I've got to apprehend them quickly. Once again, thank you for all your help. With your intel, we will put a stop to Don Shu. Jing Yuan tells me you'll be joining the forces led by the Alchemy Commission and Master Diviner. I won't take up any more of your time. Please, take good care of yourself. If you run into Don Shu again, contact the nearest Cloud Knights. Take this as a token of my appreciation. You deserve it. <laughs>